Okay, we are going to try this video for a second time. It won't take that long this time. So this is the blanket you guys saw the picture of for those who saw it and were asking me about the stitch. I have no clue what it's called, but I had done granny squares in pink, purple, blue, oh, there it is, and green. Um, colors are off in this video, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did this. I don't know what the stitch is called. I really don't. Um, it's to me, it's just a basic little whippy stitch. Um, that might be what it's called. I don't know. Maybe somebody else will know and they can tell us both and then we will all know. Um, I have extra squares left over before I made this because I changed my mind at the last minute and decided to add in the green. Um, to use for binding mainly because I was going to finish it in blue, but I ran out of blue. So it is what it is. Um, so this is the blanket you saw in the picture. So I'm going to show you what I did with the stitch. Um, I've already pre cut the green yarn mainly because I had done this video earlier and I had three of my four kids in here. So they were all up in the video and it was kind of hard to hear. Um, well, mostly because they were talking nonstop. I'm using a purple and a blue so you guys can see contrasting with the green a little bit easier on this backdrop. So cut the string. Um, some people use plastic ones. I use the little metal hooks. Find your end. Put it in. Make a loop. Um, on the stitches, it's kind of hard to see. I'm sorry, I'm flashing you guys. Um, it is kind of hard to see. I try, if you kind of can separate it, when you see in your chain stitch, you have the effort in the bottom. Um, I typically start in a corner. You can, that way when you stitch them together, you go from corner to corner. You're ready to add on more as you go. Um, some people do these, they do like this, and they'll do multiple, and you end up with a line of them this way, all stitched on one end, and then they come in and do the other way. I kind of did about all over the place and on my blanket. But it was the first one I've ever done. So, um, I try to go up under the two. If you can see how, you can see how close I can get. Um, Kind of see there how it's yeah, the lighting's not real great underneath there, and it kind of goes in between. Um, that one match it up with the other corner, so that you're going up under the same stitches on that corner, corner to corner. I tend to do a lot of the sticking the finger in the hole and holes to see where I'm sitting at to make sure I've got everything lined up. I go to the end. How I did mine. I'm sure there's multiple ways to do it. I tied the knot. Now a lot of people they'll tell you, you know, make sure you have a, a good front side and you have a back side. Um, mine, like right here, I can tell where I left a little bit coming out. So this apparently was a back at one point. The blue, I really can't tell. To me, they look the same. Um, these are my first time really making granny squares was for this blanket, so maybe as I get better I will tell a difference, but right now I really can't tell a difference. But you would put the front sides together so that you have the pretty side showing. And then I follow up underneath, let's see how close I can get this with my laptop. These little stitches right there, the little crocheted edges. I go right up underneath those, in between those and the other. It's hard in these corner pieces in the where it's got the open hole. So you'll just go underneath and then catch both of them through. Pull. I lay this down as I go across it and just kind of stitch it on flat. Um, the first one doesn't catch it. But after that it does, it gets a lot easier and a lot faster as you go. Get it down, pull it across, under over. I'm trying to 
así que sí. Ahí está. Under two. Under the next two. Pull it through. Some people weave those ends in. I tend to just kind of tuck them underneath the stitch for what I can and then go back and snip the others. Occasionally I do stick my fingers in the hole to make sure I've still got them lined up because, well, sometimes if I'm, I noticed that I was doing this while watching the movie with the kids, I was not doing so well. So. As you can see, it goes pretty quick. Across through the next set. I'm trying to keep this so you guys can see it the whole time. Under, under, under. Across. Under, under, under. Pull. Under, 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 pull, under, 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 pull, last one into the corner, under, 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 pull. Now at this point, if you were done, you would tie it off or you'd add on more stitches. I'm just going to leave it because I'll probably take it apart. And then when you open it up, as you can see, there's the pretty little green line showing for that stitch. And that's all there is to it. You could add on from here. You could add on your next square, tie it off to be done. Um, I took mine. I took the string out of the end, pulled out the same hook that I used to make the squares. And I actually just took from there and crocheted a border around the entire blanket from there using that same strand so I didn't have to cast on more. Um, that's all there was to it. That's all I did. Hope this helps. Like I said, still don't know what this is called. Maybe you know. If you do, you can share it down below. Then we'll all know. Thanks for watching.